So there I was minding my own business when all of a sudden a tweet goes up that kind of reminds me about a controller I was technically supposed to look at. And to be honest, I, I kind of slipped my mind a little bit. Now, Dashy sent me a tweet saying I should take apart that slime controller. Do you remember we talked about that controller? It was coming out in Japan. There was one previously on the PlayStation 4, but they were coming out with a Switch one. And of course, I guess that would be to play like Dragon, uh, Dragon Quest and everything with. So I thought, well, if Dashy's asking for me to take it apart, I, I guess we'll take it apart. So I went ahead and ordered one online and you know what? For it being imported, actually came in pretty quick. So this is the slime controller from Hori. They actually made this. And what's interesting about this is it it looks super uncomfortable. And I've only really seen people in like videos handle it and everything. So I'm interested to, to open it up and take a quick look to see how it feels in the hand. I have not actually opened this. So I wanted to kind of save it for like first impressions. And then I figured we would take it apart here on the spot. A lot of times I'll kind of play around with it and double check and everything. But I figure we'll do it all straight up for the first time here and it'll be pretty interesting because this is such a strange controller. I think it'll be a lot of fun to just kind of tear into it and see what's going on inside. And then of course put it back together. So I guess I can use it beyond this. Although again, I have my, some, some doubts about how comfortable this is. There we go. We take it out of the plastic. It's in this nice, I mean, it is in a nice plastic display so that you could see it and everything. I'm not sure what this says. It's uh, it's Japanese writing on the front and everything, uh, but we do have some stuff in the base as well. We could take a look at, let's see what we have in here. It's for Nintendo Switch Dragon Quest controller. Oh, I guess it's like a stand for it. So let me get this guy out. I think it's just like, it sta yeah, it does. Okay, so of course it has two analog sticks on the bottom and I guess it just stands up kind of like this. So there we go. We have a little slime controller there kind of on its stand. It's kind of neat. Uh, I guess that's just if you want to, whenever you're ready to charge it, because it does have a USB type C charger on the back. You can just plug it in. Eh, kind of cool. It feels, if it, it feels pretty sturdy actually. And it's, I, I think a lot of this is going to be hollow inside. I mean, I think that's pretty obvious to a lot of people who have seen it or have looked at it or even handled it. Cause it, it is a pretty large controller technically with a, the slime spike on the top there. Uh, so we have a nice little stand. I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy over here. Let's see what else we have. We have some instructions, I guess, for how to use it and everything, which doesn't help me as much, obviously, because I'm not 100% sure on how to read some of this. But of course it has pictures and everything, so that should at least work well enough. Uh, going in here, yeah, so they have all of this stuff here, I guess you can kind of build out of. Oh, it's the, oh, okay, it's the treasure chest. That makes sense. Hold on, let's build this. All of that work in Labo is, is starting to pay off, I have to say. I'm, I'm rolling through this pretty well. So I, I guess folding cardboard and, and fitting it together with the Switch does uh, does have its benefits. I do like this, it's kind of neat. They give you uh, just the cardboard and stuff. You can fold up the, you know, the, the treasure box and everything treasure chest with. Your Switch fits here, the slime will sit on top of it. Although I'd probably just put my Switch in a dock. Uh, it's kind of a neat thing. It's a little extra, so that's kind of that's kind of cool to have. Otherwise, I guess you at least have a spot to put your slime when he's all done, and he can sit there. It does have the charge port on the back, so pop that in there, and you're good to go. I think I would have liked to have seen some sort of like cradle for this guy to kind of sit in to charge, especially if it's like a chest like that. Kind of a neat idea to maybe think about Hori and like the next one that you do if you do something else like this again. Uh, otherwise though, it's it's a fun idea. I don't know, it's, it's a treasure chest that you fold up. So I assume the reason for the stand is because on the bottom are analog sticks. And of course, if you kind of sit it like this, technically they're kind of flatter, of course, so it will sit like that, but you are leaving, even though it's a small amount of pressure because this doesn't weigh a ton, you're still leaving pressure on it. And that's why these are uh, kind of concaved here so that it fits in and technically you can just stand it just like that. So at least comes with a stand that is designed to kind of hold it up. It does also come with a smaller USB C to type A charger. Although I think at this point, most of us have plenty of these as it is much longer than this one. This is like, this is, this is probably like half a foot. This, this, this is a very small uh, charger there. So uh, I'm sure there's several other ones you can charge it with. Now looking around this guy, um, I do like the design. Of course, it's kind of this matte blue 
almost like a rubberized, very, very lightly rubberized uh, front and everything. Again, like the design, it's it's pretty fun because of course it's, it's Dragon Quest related and everything. Uh, on the bottom here is where all of the stuff happens, right? The D-pad is at this very strange angle. I'm noticing this right away. It's, uh, it, it, it's all designed, of course, so that you're kind of holding it up like this. I, I'm not gonna tell you it's the most comfortable controller I'm holding right now, it, it's not. But is it is it funny? Yes. Is it practical? Uh, maybe not, it's unwieldy almost. I mean, I guess technically your hands fit around it pretty well like this, right? And it is surprisingly comfortable for its shape. I mean, think it, it's all round, so you're basically holding it this and your hands actually fit around it. There is a spot for your palms to kind of wrap around so you don't get uh, any kind of, it feels anyway, any type of weird claw finger or thumb or anything. So it's almost like if you held your Switch with a grip, it's it's kind of like that. So you have a good angle to the sticks, the angle to the A button, eh, a little off. Yeah, cause it's on this weird slant. So it, it actually kind of slants around like that. Uh, but I, I do like kind of the way these analog sticks feel. They're not super loose. I'd say they are a medium tension. They of course click in as you would expect them to. We have a turbo button here in the middle as well. And then we have plus minus snapshot home, A, X, A, B, X, Y, the D pad. And then of course we have ZR, ZL, R and L here. I see several spots that I assume have screws underneath of them. This I assume is where the battery might be. It looks like a door kind of kind of around here, you can see the edges of the door. So I assume that's where we'll start, but then we also have, like I said, a couple screws here. It almost looks like it all kind of comes together with this crease going around here. So I'm thinking maybe when you unscrew it, it kind of lifts up, but this is gonna be a very interesting controller to take apart. Now I did want to sync it up just to see what it would show up as. Uh, it does not show up as a slime. It just shows up as a pro controller variant here that is wireless. So unfortunately, no, they don't have the slime figure programmed in. That would have been kind of neat to see. I mean, what if you sync this up and then just a big blue slime shows up on your controller menu? That would have been really cool. Although I think Hori would have had to have worked with Nintendo on that one. And I, I feel like Nintendo might have bigger priorities like uh, like messaging your friends. Anyway, there are plenty of reviews on this controller out there right now. I feel like most people probably clicked here to see what's actually in this thing. And you know what? I'm a little curious myself. We had those blue spots that are like the stoppers, rubber stoppers. Common if you're trying to have a controller that has a curvature to it. Uh, you wanna hide the screws, generally use these so it remains flush while also still having your screws in there. Fortunately, I don't think this is going to be glued together. That was a concern when I first saw it. I, I thought to myself, they may have just glued it together or something. It does not look like that's the case. I've been able to find four screws so far. Uh, usually they'll hide one of the sticker, but I don't feel anything there. So let's start with these four and see if stuff becomes kind of loose on it. So I also just noticed something else. I think Hori wants to mess with me as well as Nintendo because these are tri-wing screws, which is interesting because I don't really see many manufacturers use these outside of Nintendo. And just now when I see this, it's a little odd, but yes, we have tri-wing drives, uh, tri-wing screwdrivers that would be needed for this. Very weird, but they come out pretty easily. Uh, the thing about tri-wing screws is they don't strip, I've seen anyway, as easily as like a Phillips head, probably because there are less points to strip. So these will come right out and uh, will at least, I think, be able to get this door off right away. So I took those four screws out. Do you want to see something kind of terrifying about how this comes apart? <laughs> this is funny. So I took those four screws out. This door is still kind of here. I think it's going to come off. I think it just needs some pressure, but I noticed as soon as I took those uh, two screws out that are not for that door, it's just for the sides here. I noticed that the back started to kind of come apart a little bit, like just a little bit. So I went ahead and started prying it up and it looks really weird if you think about it, considering this is supposed to be modeled after a slime, but the whole back of its head lifts off. It's, it's a little funky looking, but the back of his head lifts off like that where the ZR and ZL, they stay in there. So it's, you can pretty much pop this out completely. Uh, he looks fine from the front, but on the back, he's just missing the, the back chunk of his head. And if we look down here, we can pretty much right away see the, uh, the, the shoulder buttons here, ZR, ZL, R and L. And now we're kind of to the point where I have to look for more screws. I see some more back here though. 
Oh, that's so strange. They have like plastics going out for his eyeballs in here. Oh, this is so weird to look inside on this. Uh, I think I see a few screws back here. There is, as you can see, kind of a, a black plastic bracing on the inside that's just kind of holding everything together because it's very hollow. So if you look, we have uh, these large pillar almost piece of plastic in here, and that's just to hold the, the top part up. I've been fishing around in this thing, trying to figure out how to get this black bracing out after taking out the obvious screws. There are four screws that are pretty obvious. You see them right away. There are two by the charge port inside, and then there are two down by the black bracing. The other thing is though, I can't figure out, I couldn't figure out where the other screws were, because this is stuck. And I started looking inside of it, I think I have to pop their eye, this thing's eyeballs out. It's really weird sounding because of what how I'm taking this apart. But, but if I look inside, there are these pillars that go all the way to the front where the eyeballs are. And I started to kind of push in there and this little guy's eyeballs just pop out. <laughs> and I think that's where they are hiding. Yeah, they're hiding screws all the way in there. You're gonna need a very, very long kind of thin Screwdriver, it, it, I hope it's Phillips. I think it's Phillips yeah, uh, to get in there, but that would hold the black bracing in. It's pretty easy to get these out and these eyeballs are like rubberized, but it's so strange to take this. This is such a weird, weird pro control. I mean, technically the system sees that a pro controller. So do we call this a pro controller? I mean, I, I guess it's like a pro controller variant. So this is indeed a tri-wing screw in here. And the problem we run into right now is the drivers are only so long and this is basically a very long tunnel and all the way in the back, you have to go all the way to the back of this is where the screw is. So we're gonna have to kind of come up with a uh, bit of a solution for that. Okay, so here's the plan. We have standard driver extension that is just shaved off just enough here because otherwise it would have been slightly too thick to actually get through. And then we have, uh, it's basically a, a, it's a, it's a driver head that will pretty much conform to the tri-wing head here. And that should allow it to kind of break it free. Yeah, it's, it's a bit more to get it done, but it should work. And there we go. All right. So yeah, both of them are out. It's more than I thought we'd have to do for this. This is turning into a very interesting turning into a very interesting controller teardown. You know what's really funny is, I think the mouth can also come out while I have this guy out here. Oh, so strange. Yeah, the mouth will come out too. I mean, might as well just to see what's under there. Well, there's nothing, but now I have uh, the two eyeballs, right? And the mouth. So, Hopefully I didn't ruin the slime characters for you. Anyway, we have it to the point now where his entire face will come off, although I have kind of ruined it already. But now that we have those screws out, that will come off there. And I think this bracing is ready to lift out as well. It is. So we have the bracing, basically the skeleton's out, the face is off, the back of the head is off. We're, we're to the point now where we're actually to the internals. And I will say this would be a, a more difficult controller to take apart if you had to just because we've done all of this and we're just now to the circuit board. So if you get to a point where you have uh, spilled something into it or damaged it in some way inside, it is going to be a long road just to get to this point. But we're here, okay? So we're, we're, we're at least to the point where we can start checking things out in here. And I'm noticing that these are wired up. And the reason that these are wired, this is for example, the D-pad. And then we also have the AB XY here. The reason that these things are running through wires, it appears, is because of course they're kind of off on a slant for it to be rounded. And to have the board do that, it would be very, very difficult. And because technically you could bend it slightly, it could end up cracking it. So it's much easier just to run cables all over the place to make that happen. Let's go ahead and take this guy out. A couple screws it looks like, and it should come out. So this is our main board here. Uh, you can see the antenna with the Bluetooth receiver here. So the antenna is not in a bad spot now that I'm looking at it because your hands wouldn't be over that at all. Like it's pretty straightforward and it actually sticks up in the front or in the back, I guess, technically it's on the bottom. If you have the slime sitting here, the, the Bluetooth antenna would be right here. So when you're holding it and it's flipped over, it's directly at the top, pretty much pointing at, yeah, that'd be pointing at the system when you're actually using it. So that, that's a good spot for it there. I would say it has a nice window cut out there and everything. The battery is on the other side. It is a smaller battery at 550 milliamp hours, but I think that's like very, very slightly, just a little bit larger than the Joy-Con battery. It is directly soldered as well here. 
or USB-C ports at the top that is soldered to the board. Unfortunately, it's not a separate one because these, this isn't like a cheap controller necessarily. So I could see the benefit of some modular pieces. Uh, the joysticks are exactly how I would assume they would be, which is similar to like what an Xbox One stick would be like. So it, it, they do feel good. I will say that these are not like cheap sticks. Um, so I do at least like the way that they're set up. The D-pad is off on its own. It's screwed in and it's pretty much one piece, which is good, but it does have this extra piece here that holds it in place. And then it has the D-pad on its own with a very large spike in the middle here. And it does actually hit the board pretty easily. So to get a bad pr uh, press with this D-pad is gonna be difficult. It's also on like that rounded side. And to make up for that, it's very indented in the middle as in these points stick up far, but they're not sharp. So this is actually not a bad D-pad. You might look at this and assume that the D-pad is not gonna be great because of like its form factor, but they actually put together a decent one inside. It is maybe, I'm gonna say slightly more tactile than I'd like it to be. This is a very stiff rubber membrane with uh, what appear to be more similar to like the tactile membrane. So it doesn't have as mushy of a feeling as I would like it to have, but it does feel good when you press it down. So the D-pad on here is actually pretty good. We have four more screws to get the plus minus, home, snapshot, turbo, and I believe sync button all up here. It is interesting because they have, uh, they have, well, they have the four separate LEDs right there. They also have Hori imprinted here and they have 2001-21. Not 100% sure what that would be for, but this board is pretty straightforward. It's connected uh, to the it's connected to the main board through some pin headers at the bottom. Again, that's just an easy way for them to kind of make this form factor work. Have two separate boards for those pieces and kind of have them uh, sandwiched together. And looking at these buttons, they're also pretty straightforward with kind of rubber membranes with large stoppers so that they can kind of go all the way up through the rounded surface on the top. And well, that's everything for the slime controller actually. You know what? This is not a controller I would recommend people take apart because there is quite a bit that goes through it from what I can tell here. It's not a fun thing to take apart. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together now. So let me do that and I can tell you how annoying it is to, do, to put it back together with its form factor and some of the annoyances to it. All right, that's gonna do it for the slime controller. Look inside of this guy. I kind of feel like I've, I just did surgery, to be honest. It was a little odd. I mean, I'd take the thing's face off to get inside. Yeah, so that was that was interesting. Uh, it's actually synced up. It's synced up halfway through when I was putting it together and has been synced up this entire time. It's uh, seems working fine though. So everything's good there. Uh, this is not a controller I would recommend people take apart though. It's it's not easy to get apart. When you get to the point where you have to uh, have a longer tri-wing to go basically through half of this controller's body to unscrew it. And that's kind of earlier on before you get to the motherboard. Uh, not a good spot. I think that's a point where people will get stuck. And I don't recommend really taking this guy apart. Putting him back together wasn't as bad. I think the more annoying part was getting the D-pad to stay in place correctly while I was putting this stuff together because that does not screw in. Actually, the D-pad kind of floats, to be honest. It's held together with the plastics when you snap it together. And then I, I got tripped up a little bit with R and L on the back because I'm putting it together like this. And I'm like, okay, R is on this side. No, that's actually L because it's being put together upside down, technically. So uh, not the most, uh, I guess, user-friendly controller when it comes to repairing, but it looks cool. It actually feels better than you would think when you hold it in your hand. And for Dragon Quest collectors and fans of the series, I think this would be really fun to have. You just, from what I can tell, you gotta import it, but very, very neat. Is it worth the amount of money that you spend on it? Because when you import it, this can go for a little bit of money. Uh, maybe, <laughs> it depends on how big of a Dragon Quest fan you are. I wouldn't buy this as a replacement controller or anything, uh, unless you are a fan of the series, but what a, what an interesting idea. I like at least Hori's doing some fun stuff like this. So uh, why not have some more fun, do some other things as well with different series other than just, I guess, Dragon Quest. But hey, let me know what you guys think about the Dragon Quest slime controller from Hori. 
And uh, make sure you guys like the video on the way out if you enjoyed this look inside of what is a very almost horrifying controller if you consider it because it has a face and it's getting taken apart. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.